Hey guys, Amy here with Hailbound Designs and Sublimation and More. In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to sublimate socks from start to finish. So let's get started. Okay, so this is what uh, the finished product is going to look like. I wanted to show you guys that first. Now I'm going to go up and I'm going to open my template that I downloaded from Coastal Business's website. And their template happened to be a PDF file, so that will import into Photoshop. Next, what I'm going to do is delete their text layer. I don't find that useful, so I just go ahead and remove it. Next, I'm also going to delete the background layer, as I don't use that as well. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to crop it the whole entire template. I like to make it size up to exactly what I need it. Next I'm going to delete the layer mask as I don't need that as well. Okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the dark purple and I'm going to fill them with black. Um, I like to make everything black. And then next I'm going to take the safe area layer and I'm going to change the colors as well. I like them more of a bright color. And as you noticed, I filled in the heel to make it a solid black. I'm also going to do that with the toe. Now on the other side, what I'm going to do is remove that heel because what I like to do is I like to print my front and back together. So I'm going to turn this from a back sock into a front sock by just filling the whole entire uh, inside layer with green. I'm just going to cover up those texts. That's not a good eraser. I'm going to try solid one there and then there we go I'm just gonna fill that in and there we go now I'm also gonna do the same thing where it says heel over here perfect okay next I'm gonna go ahead and save this file so that I can use it in the future to design other socks socks with and I'm gonna go ahead and save this in uh, my default save folders of where I put my templates at just going to navigate to my folder here and I'm going to save it as Sublisock Crew Straight. Instead of a PDF, I'm going to save it as a PSD for Photoshop. I'm going to click the save button. And there we go. And I'm just going to hit OK. OK, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to disable uh, the view of my safe area and I'm going to duplicate my template. I do this so that if I mess up that I can delete the template copy and go and start over using the regular template. Um, next, I'm going to pick out a nice gold color because my daughter's high school team is black and gold and white. So I'm going to choose a gold color that will match their uniform. And then I'm going to go up to my brushes and I'm going to start selecting my splatter brushes. If you guys need splatter brushes, um, all you have to do is Google uh, splatter brushes for PSD and you should come up with a bunch of them. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and start applying all these different splatters, uh, rotating colors between the gold and the white. And I'm going to continue doing this until I have a finished splatter uh, pattern that I am happy with. Um, and this will take some time to get this completed. So what I've done is uh, screen captured the entire process, but I'm going to speed it up so that you guys don't have to watch it in slow motion the whole entire time. Okay, and if you happen to just randomly find us on YouTube, we also have a Sublimation and More group on Facebook, and we would love to have you guys join us. Uh, again, that's Sublimation and More. Just do a search on Facebook. And if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, please, please, please subscribe to our channel. This will motivate us to keep bringing you guys how-to videos. Okay, so I'm about wrapped up here with adding all this. Next, I'm going to create a clipping mask with the template comp copy to the uh, template background. And what you do is you hold down your Alt key while clicking in between the two layers, and that will make a clipping mask. And that's what I've done there. And the reason why you didn't see anything at first is because the original template background was not highlighted. 
Next, I'm going to go ahead and uh, import here my panther head and my finish number. Um, I've shown how to do this in other video tutorials, so I'm not going to show how to do that in this one. Basically, I'm positioning it right now um, to kind of get it to make sure that uh, it doesn't exceed the safe area. So I'm just going to resize my panther head here, get it right in the center. I'm going to do the same for my, uh, for my 24, just get it right in the center. All right, I think that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and come over here and I'm just going to hide my safe area. And let's see how it looks. It looks pretty good. Okay, so now what I'm wanting to do is I'm gonna zoom in. I'm going to wanna add a little bit of black behind the Panther and the 24. So uh, it just doesn't, it looks too gaudy on top of the splatter. So I'm gonna add a little bit of black back. So what I'm gonna do is still use my splatter brushes, but I'm going to make it black. And then I'm just going to kind of uh, splatter underneath. There we go. Just kind of go around the edges of the panther. And uh, just keep going until it looks good. And I like that effect right there. So what I did is moved on to the 24. Kind of decide on what I want to do here. So there we go. That looks good. Just add a little bit at a time until you kind of get the effect you want. You may not want to do this, um, but I wanted a little more black below my 20. Uh, I mean, underneath, I'm sorry, underneath my 24 and my Panther. Uh, especially in the center there because it's outlined in gold already, so you don't want to have any gold splatter really underneath that. And the cool thing is, is if you didn't like or you felt like you did too much, instead of going backwards, it would be just easier to go ahead and uh, get your gold brush back and just add a few more splatter, different splatters back into it versus doing the undo a few times. So that's kind of what I'm doing now is just adding a little more splatter back to kind of make it look a little natural for me. And I'm going to do it over here a little bit too, right there, there you go, a little bit more, there we go. Okay, I could probably do this all day, as you can tell I'm having fun. Okay, I think that should complete the pattern, and now I'm going to zoom back out and just kind of take an overall look at how it looks, and I think it looks pretty great. Okay, now I'm going to highlight both layers and I'm going to go ahead and merge them. So I'm just going to click on both, right click and do merge layers. Okay, so that gives me my background copy. I like to rename it and call it background. Then I'm going to lock the layer so it stays in place. Next I'm going to click on the 24 layer and I'm going to rename that number so that I know that's where I changed their numbers. Next, I'm going to click on the Panther layer, and I'm going to go ahead and name that School Logo, so that I know if I want to replace the logo, that's where I go and do that at. Okay, so this pretty much completes the process of creating this uh, sock template. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and save the sock template now before I get ready to print. So I'm just going to save it in my folder, die sublimation. I'm going to go down here to folders sock designs for print and I go to my schools folder and under ridge and I'm just going to go ahead and name this ridge splatter I already have one in there so uh, this was the second design so I'm gonna go ahead and re rename it to two and hit save okay now we're ready to print so we're gonna go up to file and then print and we're going to make sure that all of our settings are ready. So I'm going to choose my Workforce Epson 7110 series. I'm going to go into my print settings. And I'm going to check my auto select to paper cassette one. The reason is, is because I need it to be on the best possible print. And I'm going to choose Super B. That's the largest print it can be. My paper type is premium presentation paper mat. I want my quality high. 
And then I'm going to go into uh, the more options up at the top. And I'm going to click on image options and I don't need to change any settings here. I'm going to go to advanced and make sure my there is no color adjustment set. We want to make sure that's set. Hit OK. And then next we want to make sure we have the mirror image set and I like to choose high speed. Hit OK. As you can see it resized it. You want to make sure that Photoshop manages colors. Um, and then for printer profile, for me I'm going to choose my Cobra polyester cloth premium presentation as I feel that that prints the best. Then I'm going to choose perceptional and check the box that says black point compensation. And uh, now we're ready to print. Okay, now we're ready to print and I'm going to show you my paper. It's solid white on one side and on the back side it has the text print minus R. That's how I know which side I need to print on. I'm going to load it upside down with the text print R faced up in my first top tray. I'm going to put that in there and then we're going to start printing. Okay, so the printer's printing. Um, basically I silenced it out so you didn't have to hear all the funny noises. Um, and it's going to print for a few minutes. It's a large print, so I'm going to show you different angles. This is printing from the top. Just kind of show you how my uh, continuous ink system works from Cobra inks that I got in, uh, in conjunction with my Workforce 7110. This is a wireless printer. That's what I love about it. One of the many reasons. <clears throat> Okay guys, this is one of my favorite parts of the video. This is where I speed the video up just to get through the full print process so that you guys can see how uh, the full print process works on this particular printer with the Cobra ink, set, uh, Cobra ink system. Honestly, I really wish it did print this fast, but it doesn't. Still love the printer though. So it's almost done, I'm getting ready to finish up here. And next up, I'm gonna show you guys how to press these socks. Okay, so this is what the final print looks like. It mirrored correctly. It looks great. I think my colors came out well. I'm really happy with it. Okay, so I've already placed my sock on my jig and a jig is just a piece of wood um, to kind of help you. So if you're going to do a full bleed, you kind of needed to put it on that jig so that you can twist the sides. This particular sock that I got from Coastal has a seam down the back to kind of help you uh, tell you where the center of the sock is. Okay, you guys are going to need some uh, spray adhesive. I use that to spray on the paper so that my stock, socks stick to it nice and good without moving after I place the sock and then I, I need to flip it over to get ready to press. Okay, next you'll want to make sure you put some protective paper down on your bottom platen. Uh, that's so the inks don't stain on your press. Next I'm laying my uh, print on top of the protective paper and then we're going to add some protective paper on top of that. I do that just to protect the top of my press. Um, any kind of paper will work. The brown paper you see is packing or papers, uh, painting paper that I get from Walmart. And then the white paper is just scraps of paper I've used, uh, maybe running a print head cleaning or whatever. I always save it because I know I can use it as protective paper when I print or I mean when I'm pressing. Okay, so we're done. Now I'm going to slide my printer back in and I'm ready to press. We're pressing for 400 degrees for 60 seconds. Okay, so my heat press is finished and now I'm just going to slowly peel the paper off. Just kind of see how it looks as I peel the paper off. And it looks great. I'm pretty happy with these results. Okay, so now I'm just kind of uh, waving the jig with the sock on it to help cool it off faster so that I can turn the edges of the sock. And I'm going to show you how I'm going to do that now. So what you want to do is you want to slightly uh, twist the edges over so that the other side of the print shows just a little bit. This is how you're going to get your full bleed without those white lines. Uh, showing up the sides of the sock. 
So you're going to want to continue doing this, uh, going all the way down the first side of the jig. And then once you've completed, you turn it over and you will work on the other side of the jig. And you'll just turn it over. You don't have to do too much, just a little bit. And you just keep going all the way down. And then once I get down to the toe of the sock, I even turn the toe a little bit down. Just making sure all my edges are good here. And there we go. And so this is what it should look like. And if you see any that aren't turned, you just want to kind of straighten that out. This is very important so that that bleed uh, blends over from the first print to the second print. Okay, so now that I'm finished, what we're going to do is go ahead and put some spray adhesive on the uh, second print. And this is going to be the front of the sock with the Panther logo on it. So I've already sprayed the spray adhesive. Now I'm going to want to place my sock and even it up on the print. And I always lay it down with the print face up so I, that I can make sure it's even. And then I firmly press it down to make sure that that adhesive is sticking. I'm going to fl uh, flip the print over and just kind of smooth it out. Now I'm going to place my protective paper over the top of the print and we're going to get ready to press. I'm going to go ahead and slide my caddy back and pull my press down. Okay, so remember that I press the socks at 400 degrees for 60 seconds. This uh, is the best temperature and time setting that works for me that I feel like the colors come out really vibrant. So the press is done. I'm going to go ahead and push my swing away, away from the print. I'm going to go ahead and pull my drawer out. And we're going to dispose of the protective paper. And now I'm going to lift the print slowly to see how it came out. really liking it so far and it came out really good okay so I'm all done and this is what it looks like came out really nice the colors are a lot more vibrant in person than on the camera now I'm going to go ahead and pull the sock off show you both sides here Bottom of the toes look good. 24. And now I'm going to show you the side seams. As you can see, there's no white, uh, no white from the sock going up the sides. Now the sides don't exactly match, but um, there's a different method if you want to do it to go uh, match all the way around. And even then, that's going to have a tendency to slightly be off. Okay, so that concludes this video tutorial on how to create sublimation stocks from start to finish. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, www.southernmore.com. Thanks for watching, everyone. Hey, guys, I wanted to share with you that I went ahead and created a 10-pack splattered paint digital background uh, package for you guys. You get 10 uh, backgrounds for $3, that's it. And this will also save you time if you do not want to do the whole method of creating your own uh, splatter background. So go to our website, www.hailbound.com to purchase, or click on the show more in the YouTube video, and that will also give you a direct link. Thanks.